This is Mohammed bin Salman. The 33-year-old Crown Prince is the de facto ruler of one of the world's last remaining absolute monarchies. His father, King Salman, is reportedly suffering from dementia and deferred most responsibilities to his son last year. The Crown Prince's controversial rise to power saw him muscle out his older cousin to become heir apparent, allegedly by having him detained until he relented. Now, the self-styled reformer has been running a relentless public relations campaign aimed at changing the Saudi Arabian Kingdom's image around the world. In the last few years, he's ushered in reforms to allow women to drive, opened up the kingdom to tourism, and wound back the powers of the country's religious police, all the while appearing to drive a purge on former corrupt princes and ministers. He's visited the US president at the White House, agreed to sign up to China's digital Silk Road, and wooed business leaders like Bill Gates and tech companies in Silicon Valley. But his ruthless rise to power has also signalled a rapid shift in the political dynamics of the Middle East. And the murder of Saudi journalist and critic of the royal family Jamal Khashoggi in Turkey has highlighted the lingering contradictions deeply embedded at the heart of the Saudi Arabian Kingdom. For example, his attitudes on social reform and a freer, more open Saudi Arabia stand in contrast to his violent attacks on dissidents, his support for conservative Islamist groups across the region, his muscling up to regional rival Iran in proxy conflicts in Yemen and Syria, and the controversial crackdown on rivals from within his own family. But before the current regime, the birth and development of the Gulf monarchy has an important and complicated history. The kingdom in its modern form was established in 1930, when Ibn Saud united a section of the fractured Arabian Peninsula into a single kingdom. The discovery of oil in 1938 fueled Saudi Arabia's rise to international prominence and brought untold wealth to the royal family. That the oil was found on the same land as the birth of Islam only further cemented belief that there was a certain prophetical element to the spiritual and material wealth of the land. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is ruled by a single family at all levels of governance, known as the House of Saud. But the vocally conservative ruling family has long been surrounded by the trappings of modernity and luxury, and often wields its wealth and power around the world more like a regional despot than a humble, pious government. Over the years, the House of Saud has maintained its power through a centuries-old agreement with the leaders of a deeply conservative branch of Islam, established by Muhammad ibn Abd al-Wahhab. By supporting and funding the growth of the Wahhabist ideology, the royal family has been able to gain and maintain legitimacy through the religious teachings of the nation's clerics. But Wahhabism has also been accused of fermenting extremism across the globe. 15 of the 19 9-11 hijackers were Saudi, as was Osama bin Laden, the mastermind behind the attack. Wahhabism has also made the kingdom one of the world's most controversial countries when it comes to human rights. Apostasy is punishable by death, as is homosexuality, adultery and sorcery. And most executions take place in public with beheadings by a sword, or in some cases by stoning. And while women can now drive in Saudi Arabia, they still require the consent of a male guardian for many day-to-day -day activities. They must be covered and face discrimination in many aspects of everyday life. This reality on the ground is not easily reconcilable with the progressive reformist image the Crown Prince is trying to project around the world. And his rise to power is shaking the political establishment of Saudi Arabia and reverberating across the region. He's financed and supported a new wave of iron-fisted governments following the Arab Spring and ushered in a new era of assertive foreign policy aimed at stifling the influence of regional rival Iran. It's this ambition that has fostered a renewed closeness with the United States under President Donald Trump. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. President. The US President defied protocol by making Saudi Arabia the first country he visited after taking office. And he claims he secured more than $100 billion of arms sales to the kingdom. 
This relationship has seen countries turn a blind eye to the Saudi-led conflict in Yemen against Iran-backed rebels. It's left the country in ruins, with thousands dead and on the brink of starvation. And the strangling blockade of neighbouring Gulf state Qatar was also reportedly the work of the ruling government through the Crown Prince. In Syria, Saudi Arabia has funnelled money and weapons to rebel groups trying to oust President Bashar al-Assad, many with extremist links. And now, even back at home, Mohammed bin Salman's crackdown on dissent is starting to attract attention. More than 30 Saudi elites became five-star prisoners at the Ritz-Carlton in Riyadh last year, when the Crown Prince had them detained in what was ostensibly a corruption crackdown, but perceived by many to be a move to solidify power. Others who have spoken out against the regime have disappeared. Three dissenting princes living in Europe have been missing for almost five years. Journalists have been detained, and more recently, the bizarre murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi has further revealed to the world the cracks in the Crown Prince's progressive and reformist vision. Mr Khashoggi's final op-ed highlighted the Arab world's need for more freedom of expression, a clear rebuke to the Saudi regime of silence and censorship. So what does this mean for the future of the Saudi Kingdom and its relationship with the West? The Crown Prince's reformist image continues to be undermined by his violent approach to dissent and maintaining brutal punishments under Sharia law. But the billions of dollars of deals the kingdom has with other global powers, along with the world's reliance on Saudi oil, help shield it from economic and political reprisal. For now, analysts predict that his agenda is likely to continue largely unhindered. But the Crown Prince faces a mounting challenge to maintain control over the kingdom's vast familial interests, the growing voices of dissent both in and outside of the country, and the nation's deeply embedded conservative ideologies opposed to his reformist agenda. His greatest challenge of all is his plan to diversify the oil-reliant economy. His flagship measure for his 2030 vision plan is to sell part of the state-owned oil company Aramco. Just whether he can, along with his other ambitions, remains to be seen.